guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm pretty sure I can say that since this is my third video. Uh, Atari jumped up here because he wanted to say hi to all his fans because I know you're really here for him. Uh, as you saw, the title of this video is What's in My Clinical Bag? And I didn't want to just do a What's in My Bag video. I kind of want to throw in some advice to any like pre-nursing students or just people who haven't started their clinicals yet or even those of you who have started and maybe want some way to feel a little more confident. Um, so keep watching. All right, so this is the bag that goes with me to the clinical site from Figs. They are a scrub brand. They sell accessories, hence the bag. Uh, it says, this bag contains a stethoscope, coffee, big goals, all-nighters, and a very large needle. There are no needles in this bag. There was yesterday because we had a skills check off um, for injections, but no, no needles. <laughs> Everything else is occasionally in here. All right, um, on it I have my little favorite pen, Nurses Inspire Nurses, uh, from Kat over at Nine Lives Health. She's an awesome coach for nurses. She kind of teaches how to stray away from the nurse burnout, how to become an entrepreneurial nurse. And she's just super amazing, so go check her out on Instagram, Nine Lives Health, Nurses Inspire Nurses, super cool. Now, what actually is in this bag? The contents range from chapstick to blood pressure cuff, okay? I'll explain why. So I'm going to start off with showing you the most common thing that you are going to find that you need for a clinical rotation is a stethoscope. And you will see on Instagram that a lot of people are going to be like, get a Litman, get a this expensive $400 stethoscope. Honestly, in my opinion, you don't need a really expensive stethoscope. MDF, their stethoscopes range, I believe, from like $40 to like $120. Don't quote me. But that's what this is. It's an MDF stethoscope, MDF Instruments. And I love it. I got it two years ago it looks brand new still no scratches full black it's cute and it works it was forty dollars on amazon and it looks very similar to the all black litman which apparently might work better but mdf instruments is kind of my go-to i love it it's great it came with different sizes for the little ear thingies so basically you're going to need a stethoscope. You're going to want one that works. You're going to want one that is of quality. And like I have said in a previous video is that the ones that your school um, kind of gives to you is actually not of the highest quality. They buy them in bulk and things are a little quiet and not as easy to hear. I have found through two um, examples is that basically I was doing a skills check off with a partner and it was during the beginning of school starting and it was for vital signs and I could hear her heart perfect with this one but then when I used the the school supplied one with my teacher we both noticed that you can't you really couldn't hear her heart at all and you that's something you're gonna need to hear you're gonna need to hear you're gonna have to listen to bowel sounds you're gonna have to listen to the heart you're gonna have to listen to lungs so get a stethoscope that one you like two doesn't break the bank because you're in school and three you can hear quality sounds out of so mdf instruments amazon forty dollars they have a great instagram they have so many cool products they have they have it all no offense to Litman, i just didn't want to spend a lot of money all right now we'll move on for my first um term clinical rotations they did require that we brought brought along our bp cuffs this is a school supplied one um i just didn't invest in one because i know that a lot of facilities and hospitals actually use electronic blood pressure so i bring this one along just in case my teacher wants us to manually take it rather than you know electronically just in case you will definitely need it first term at your clinicals um, because you have to know how to take vital signs manually. <clears throat> Next, uh, I have this really cute fanny pack. And 
by saying really cute, I am saying it sarcastically. It's not cute. So it has two sides and it's how I bring in most of the stuff I need for clinicals without bringing in my bulky bag. So this is one side. As you can see, the side's empty right now. Sometimes my phone's in it. Sometimes I have a granola bar and other random things. And then I flip it over and I have all my other goodies. And as you can see, I have my bandage tape on the side. So the goodies in which I carry in here that you will for sure need at a clinical site are a pin light. Look how cute this pin light is. It's from Koi Happiness Scrubs. I love them. Not just saying it because I am an ambassador for them, but because they have just like some of the cutest stuff. They have Betsy Johnson scrubs. They have these cute leopard pin lights and they have it all. And I want to show you what the school supplied pin light versus this pin light looks like. School supplied. It's just, it works. I mean, you don't need nothing fancy. So pen light, for sure. Use it for the whole eye stuff. And then you will need a thermometer. And you'll also need in your pack thermometer sleeves. Because you don't want to stick a thermometer in someone's mouth that has been in someone else's mouth. And then You'll also need alcohol pads to wipe down your thermometer, your stethoscope, your watch, anything that comes in contact with someone else's body fluids. You know what I'm saying. Let me get a drink really quick. Better. Okay. So this next thing you're probably not going to always need. You might not even use it once, but you will get brownie points with whatever nurse you are following around if they don't have it on them and they happen to need it. It's actually trauma shears and scissors. These are survive wear matte black ones that I got off of Amazon. They weren't pricey, maybe under $10. They're great. I like everything being black. I like to match. So I don't know, get a pair. If your school doesn't supply it or that you want, carry it with you. Get those points, you know, look good. Obviously, you're going to want a pen and a highlighter, probably two pens. I always have a second in my bag. And I have this little field notes notebook that I literally just write my notes in. Why do you need to write notes? Well, first of all, you're going to want to know the codes of the facility or hospital you're in. <clears throat> I have pressure ulcer stages. I have what to do during a code blue right in here. And then I, um, I occasionally will write down like the rooms that were not allowed in, in a facility rooms that are under isolation. I will write down my patient's vital signs. So it's just good to have a little notebook for your notes. <clears throat> And last but not least that I carry in this super fashionable nurse's fanny pack is, yeah, hand sanitizer. I always have hand sanitizer. Usually I'll have a spray one, I'll have this one, it doesn't matter. You cannot have too much hand sanitizer as a nursing student or nurse. You touch some stuff. Yes, you have gloves on, but you touch some stuff. I mean, you're gonna touch patients things and you're gonna like not want what they have you, you just just trust me always have hand sanitizer yes they have hand sanitizer outside the rooms yes whatever sometimes they're out and you're gonna hate yourself because you're walking around looking for a sink hand sanitizer trust me this has come in handy so what else do i take with me i take my apple watch with me um, I like it because basically I don't like the ticking of actual watches. That's, it gives me anxiety. That's probably really bad, but you can put it on this little screen, which, you know, there you are. And it's like a regular watch, regular clock. It counts my steps. I find that fantastic. 
Um, some facilities do not allow you to have a cell phone in their place because of cameras and HIPAA. If you don't know what HIPAA is, you should know before you go into any facility. Um, so we can get notifications on there. You can just keep track of time. If you want to take a regular watch, go ahead and bring a regular watch, but I just specifically prefer the Apple Watch. I wear it every day anyways. It's great. Okay, so what else do I have in the contents of my giant bag? Um, well, I have a binder. I have lotion. I have chapstick. Now, the lotion and chapstick are really needed for me because the climate in a facility is weird. So you walk into like the main building and it's freezing. You can go in one room and you are sweating, like literal sweat. Then you can walk back out and freeze. The climate is never like a stable 70 degrees. It's ever changing. So your lips are going to get chapped, hence chapstick. And then your hands are chapped after the amount of times you wash your hands, use hand sanitizer, the gloves you're wearing have weird powder in them sometimes. You just, you want lotion for, you know, your hands are going to be gross, your cuticles are going to start cracking, so I always have this lotion with me. <clears throat> so here's my binder. Here I have my clinical rotation schedule with the directions, yada yada. And then inside I have guidelines for assessment and documentation. That's a whole thing. I have guidelines for care plans. Yes, you will be doing care plans. I have a care plan form here. Actually, I have a lot of those forms. <laughs> and then I have here neurological assessment flow sheet. So just basically things that will come in handy when I am doing care plans or when I am doing a head to toe assessment. I have an old one in here. <clears throat> So this is what a head to toe assessment is. It's exactly what it sounds like, head to toe. You're assessing a patient, vital signs, cognitive ability, neurological response, you know, all that good stuff. And what also helps with a head to toe assessment is to have one of these handy dandy PDQs for LVNs or LPNs. Um, so it's just, facts on hand to have. Sometimes I carry this in my little fanny pack. <clears throat> so it has vital signs and the ranges. I just highly recommend you carry this with you. It's going to help you so much. It has, you know, peds, geriatrics, emergency and first aid. It has labs. So when you're reading a patient's chart and you're like, wow, what does this lab mean? I don't remember the normal range that this should be in like what is the value look in here so the next thing that i always have with me is really annoying to carry but it has helped a tremendous amount in learning medications it is the nurse's drug handbook as you can see it's new 2019 um so like it really helps when you're looking at a patient's chart and you do not know the drug so I have learned a lot of medications and drugs by looking at a chart, writing in my handy dandy little notebook that's in my hip pack, fanny pack, and then looking it up at lunchtime or later on in this. So one that I like have now learned by heart is gabapentin, and that is a generic for neurotonin. Now you think of neuro, neurological, what could it be? It helps to manage neuralgia. So any sort of pain in maybe your spine, your vertebrae, or maybe you have heart, like seizures, this helps with that. So I can just like open up the book, look for gabapentin, oh look, there it is. So it's super helpful. There's also an app on your phone, but like I've mentioned before, a lot of facilities do not allow you to have your phone on you in their facility. 
So, needed. So that's all I really carry with me. I'm sorry if that's not exciting, but that's what I have. I'm hoping that's helpful for you guys if you didn't know what to bring. It's just um, pretty simplistic stuff, but yeah. Okay, so clinical site advice. Confidence is key in my opinion. Um, I do have, I guess, a prior healthcare background since I was a caregiver and I became a CNA. So I kind of already knew how clinicals were going to go in a sense, especially when we in first term had to follow around the nurse's assistant only. There was no shadowing the RN or LVN. It was basically just doing that nurse assistant work. Uh, so basically just be confident. And if you don't know what to do, ask questions. Um, and confident also doesn't mean to be comfortable, if that makes any sense. Because when we become comfortable is when errors tend to happen. And I would like to say that errors are always going to happen with students if we are not coherent to the fact that we are not professionals. Um, so what you don't want to forget is that you need to ask questions. You always need to double check, triple check, quadruple check who your patient is when giving them food, when giving them meds, when giving them care. Because each person that you deal with, each patient has a specialized care plan specifically for them. There are not two patients alike. So for my first term, I went in already knowing the nursing assistant stuff. But now in my second term, once I finish um, pharmacology next week, I will be able to start passing medications. And the way I'm gonna go into it is, is I'm garbage. <laughs> I literally know nothing. Um, so I'm going to ask my teacher everything possible that I can to not make an error. I am going to watch the nurse like a hawk so that I know what to do. It is so important to be humble, to ask questions. You do not know everything. You're a student. That's just the way it is. Um, but conf holding yourself with confidence is different than not being humble and full of it. Uh, so walk in with a positive attitude. Walk in knowing that you know what you're doing, but to the extent of where you know when to ask for help. That is a huge, huge game changer in just basically who you are, is when you are able to be confident with also being able to ask for help. Um, so I highly advise that you walk into any facility or hospital you're working in for clinicals with that mindset. Another thing is if you see a nurse or nursing assistant do something not by the books, I would say that it a lot of the times could be a teaching moment, but also don't be rude about how you present yourself to that person. So for example, um, I was at a facility for a clinical um, site rotation and I was feeding a patient and a nursing assistant came in and told me I needed to feed that patient faster. And I knew deep down that that was a really bad idea. This patient has very difficult time swallowing. He doesn't speak. So I didn't do it. The uh, nursing assistant came back in and asked me to feed the patient faster. And my response was, I think I'm going to feed him the way I am feeding him because I know he has trouble swallowing. I do not want this patient to choke. If you need the tray, I can walk it back to the kitchen when he is finished and I will write out um, how much he ate. So you need to do meal percentages. And I found <laughs> like that, I felt that that was appropriate and it wasn't rude but the um, nursing assistant rolled his eyes at me and left. But from that moment forward, he didn't bother me when I was feeding that patient. And I made sure to approach my teacher after and explain to her that I had a uh, nursing assistant do that. And she's, her response was, you always know better than, than the nursing assistant. You are um, an LVN student and what you did and how you said it was completely appropriate. 
Now, had I said, uh, now sir, I'm gonna feed him this way, you're wrong, uh, he's gonna choke, then, you know, it may have gone a little differently. He probably would have been more upset than an eye roll because that is extremely rude. And I wasn't gonna say like, oh, I know better because I'm a nursing student. It's like, no, I, I know because I was uh, a CNA at one point, I had that job and I do now know more than I did then. I'm not saying that I know more than that nursing assistant, but it, it just wasn't appropriate the way that he wanted to, me to feed the patient. So, like I said, just think about the way you're going to approach someone. It is a teaching moment. There's always going to be a teaching moment. Just make sure that you approach the situation calmly and you make sure that you actually know what you're talking about because then you're just going to look kind of dumb. Um, if you do see a situation that you are uneasy about or you feel is inappropriate but you don't know how to approach it, it is always important to grab your um, instructor because your instructor can, you know, um, either say, I'll deal with it, or here's how you can deal with it, or you're wrong, let's drop it. Um, so that's just also really important is to always bring your instructor in if you see something wrong. Now, if you feel like you have done something wrong, you need to immediately report it to your instructor as you would immediately report it to a nurse supervisor as an actual nurse and not just a student. Um, in my clinical rotations and with my group, I've had two different groups now, none of us have actually committed any errors, I guess you can say. So that's been really cool. It's just seeing that a lot of us um, who went in not confident are actually succeeding. And what's also amazing about the clinical rotation is that it, if things aren't clicking in class, they typically seem to click in the real hands-on experience. So if you feel like, oh man, in class I'm not, I'm just not getting it, I'm afraid to touch an actual patient and be hands-on, I guarantee you that it's going to click. It's simple, it's just really about having confidence without being stubborn and without being full of it. You know what I'm talking about. So guys, that's all I really have to say before this video gets unnecessarily long. I hope you liked it, I hope it helps. Um, it was highly requested, so for those of you who wanted to, wanted me to post this, I really hope you got something out of it. Thanks for watching, guys.